thing. This is um, this is for like our Father's Day issue oh. that we're doing. And um, I, I wanted to talk to you in particular because uh, we're talking to different dads in different stages of their lives. Mm. And you're you're a special kind of dad because ever since we've seen you, we've seen you with Boogie. And we've seen you with your daughters. And now we see you with your youngest son. And um, it's it's wild to see that now you, you've crossed over into the, the 50s and you're a new dad. That's a whole nother space that we haven't really seen in hip hop like that. Or at least um, black men in entrepreneurial roles that we've grown up with in that in that respect. So could you speak on what it's like now being a dad at this this stage in your life? Well, you know, if you've been watching my whole career, it's always been a fight for me to be with my children. You know, mm. I've always had issues with, you know, my children's mothers and it really hurts the kids. But I was really never able to wake up with my children and go to sleep with them and not have to visit them and not have to fight to see them. So it was almost a thing. I'm the type of person where I'm going to keep doing it till I get it right. You know, mm. and all I've ever wanted was a family. That's all I've ever wanted. My whole, I don't care about nothing else but family. And that's the thing that the women that were around me knew. They knew their kids, my kids came first and that would be the only way that they could hurt me. And I think the issue was when you have a child with someone that is not your best friend, when you have a child with someone that you're not in love with and you know, it becomes again, a visiting situation. So I was a good visiting father. And what I hated about that was number one, I'll take all the blame, I guess, you know, because I'm a man. And I just know how much it hurts my children and how much it's hurt them up to when they became adults. Like, the issue doesn't stop when they become adults, you know? And it's a cycle that needs to be broken. So my, my, my job as a man and all of our jobs as parents is to make sure that our children don't go through the same hardships and pains that we have gone through. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, most of... For that, I was really proud most, you know, like them. They didn't have to go to the street. I was able nannies, private school, give them everything they want, college, vacations, everything. No hustling, all that. But the thing that I didn't, the cycle I didn't break was I was from a broken home, I mean, rather broken marriage. And I knew how much it hurted me for my moms to be arguing about my dad and my dad to be arguing about my moms. All I wanted for Christmas, every Christmas, until I was an adult, was for, I just wish they could get back together. That's all I ever wanted so that I don't have to hear this fighting, I don't have to choose a side. And I wasn't able to stop that cycle for my first four kids. So for this one, I'm doing it right. And if, you know, if, I'm, if I have to do it right at 50, then I'm gonna do it right. You know, it took me to be 50, but you know, I'm a slow learner sometimes for certain things. But I think I, I got you. it right this time. I feel you. If we go back to what you just said about your parents, um, what was it about the situation then that kind of like always stuck with you? I know you said about like the Christmas uh, situation, but were there times when you got to see them together happy? No, I don't remember my parents together at all. Wow. I never saw it. I mean, I, I mean, they, they got divorced when I was three. Mm -hmm. And from then on, it was both of them bashing each other. Was there a way that you tried to bring them together? Were there times when you tried to do that? I was a kid. I wasn't thinking about none of that shit. I mean, like older, when, when you got older. No, no, my mom died when I was 16. Mm -hmm. and, my, and my father remarried. He had left my mom's for his wife that he okay. kept till he died. And did you learn certain things from your dad that you incorporate now, uh, good, bad, or indifferent? Oh, definitely. I learned what not to do about certain things. For sure. I know, like, if, if, if my father did some things that made me feel a certain way, I wasn't going to do the same things to any one of my children. Mm. You know, like, I remember going to my pops for Christmas because my mother made, like, would have to make him take me. And I'd go to his house and my, my little brother would be having mad gifts because his mom would look out. And I wouldn't have, I, like, I remember seeing it, my, I going on a Christmas and my, my brother getting every toy in the world. And then my father handed me a book. And that shit broke my heart as a kid. And I was just like, 
and, and you know, it's the kind of thing where you like, yo, if your father is an alcoholic, you can either be an alcoholic or you cannot drink because of it. You know, so I chose to do all the things that hurt me not to do none of those things if, consciously if I could. You know what I mean? So yes, I, indeed. I, yeah. Did, did, have you had a better relationship with them or have, have y'all reconciled? My father died uh, about 10 years ago. But, uh -huh. you know, it's something that, you know, because I, I, became, I, I became a man very young, you know, about 16. You know what I mean? I started having my own businesses and... You know, I got to a point where I was able to employ my father to be my son Boogie's nanny. Because I was like, he wasn't my dad, but I'll pay you to be his grandfather. You know what I'm saying? But after a while, I resented that. You know what I mean? But I ended up taking them on vacation and doing all that. Like, I'm not going to ever make myself a bad person. And I ain't saying my pop, my pop is I. You know what I mean? Like, those are just the issues there. But I'm not going to do something bad because somebody else did something bad. I'm not going to, I'm never going to lower my energy because someone else's energy is low. They got to level up to my energy. So I'm going to always stay bright no matter what. So you could do certain things. If you, like my family, I'm going to still look out for you. It don't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, that's the test. Right. When you, when you say that, it, it, it made me think about um, your stance, because we're definitely going to get into your relationship with your kids. But what you just said kind of like took me back to something that Beanie said um or, and i'm paraphrasing to a degree how uh rockefeller was a family mm. and there's certain artists that have mentioned you know when you and jay have been going through your stuff it was like parents divorcing and stuff like that did you realize how much of a father figure you were to so many people that work for you at rockefeller and not just the artists i'm talking about you know like all the different executives that you help bring into prominence as well yeah i know it I was surprised at how they acted toward their dad, but I knew it. You know, I was in t I took care of them. I, that was always my thing. You know, make sure everybody was all right. But it was funny because nobody made sure I was all right. Why do you say that? Because that was the case, even down to being. So you're saying that regardless of what you did as a father, you saw the resentment? Is it resent? What, what is it that they didn't do outside of not making sure you're all right? Because I don't know if... It's, you know, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's in not. the past. I don't even want to talk about it. But my point is, bottom line is I'm going to still be a parent and I'm going to always treat people well. Even with my kids today, you know, you could do mm -hmm. everything for them, but they still, you know, people become entitled and they don't give back the same that you give. But you, I'm going to always keep my energy the right way. There's, I don't think there's many people that I've given that have given back the same. At least not even, I'm not even saying money, I'm just saying even time, whatever. Like when I'm going through things where I, you know, you hear nobody, nobody comes through and says, yo. When you heard Dane was supposed to be going through it and broke, nobody came through and was like, yo, you need help? Nobody ever did that. Not one time. Every court case, feel? every time when I when, when Mike going through with my kids, nobody comes through and be like, can I help? But I'll still be there for them, always. And there's no resentment for that. That's just who I am. Right. Do you think it's hard for people to know what kind of help you may need because you're so independent and you... You're such the, the it's like, you know, checking on your strong friends type of thing. Do people really know right how to do that? Listen, we're all men. We're adults. You know, we know. You know what I mean? It just, again, everybody's cut from that cloth. Some people don't know how to love because they don't know how to love themselves. And that's how I see it. The reason why I know how to love is because of how much I love myself. You know, you can't love others unless you know how to love yourself. And what's loving yourself? Like, some people look at that differently. You know what I mean? Like, some, I, I feel like a lot of the people that you dealt with back then, and I'm not to harp on that, but just as an example, they've come from a lot of the broken homes and stuff that you were talking about, and they might not necessarily have the tools. This is not defending. I'm, I'm just I, I'm saying. I'm not judging, bro. I'm just telling you the facts. Yeah. You know, no judgment. It is what it is. Right, right, right. Like, yo, I, I'm not like, yo, you should learn how to love yourself. I'm like, yo, that's on you if you don't love yourself. You know what I mean? Like, Everybody knows I love myself. I keep, you know, I keep myself healthy. I keep myself happy. I keep things around me that don't trigger me. I stopped the whole music business because it was that was the love of myself. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? I love myself too much to be going through and be around people I don't that don't love me and that I don't love being around. Right. But does the business the business changes them as well from what that business? That wasn't love. no business. That's you know nickels to me ain't business, bro. It wasn't, it wasn't big enough business. Personal? Actually, let me let you finish, okay? No, no, no. You said the... 
You said the business wasn't continue that thought. It, it just wasn't bit that wasn't business to me. That was jokes. I do business. That's why, I, you know, I know business. So, you know, what business? I took care of all mm. the business. I did I do all the business. That's why if you notice everything that I started once I left no longer existed. No more Rockefeller, even though it was at the height. No more Rockware, no more state property, no more none of that. But you always reinvent yourself as far as like with businesses and things of that nature. Well, so you stay in business even though Well, uh, I, I evolve. You know, as I get older, I like to do different things. That's just me. I, I would never stay in one business and do one thing my whole life or for more than a couple of years just because I get bored. I'm uninspired. It's like, mm -hmm. to me, going to the same club for, for five years straight. Like, when I go back to, like, a party or something and I see the business, I'm like, yo, that's crazy. And no disrespect to anybody, but just for me, I couldn't be in the same environment around the same people for 20, 30 years. It's like being in high school in the same grade to me. I just couldn't do it. You know, I just like to meet new people. That's why, if you notice, I, I go different states, different countries, open it up. I don't even do business. I just do shit. Like, I'm not even trying. You'll see when I'm trying to do business. When I come back, I, I took like a 15-year break just relaxing luxury style. You know, and being I, artistic. I don't, think, I don't think people would call what right. you've been doing a 15-year break, bro. Cause you when the last time you seen me? How many times have you seen me in person in the last 15 years? That's true. That's true. And how many That's times have you seen people that are really famous in person? That's real. That I, but that's physical. I'm talking like you've started. Well, I exist. Work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I'm doing it as I want. Like, I'm not like outside raising money, trying to get somebody to leverage their celebrity, paying people to do this. And basically, I just give ideas away all day. And you mm. see the world just go far. I'll be like, yo, man, the world's boring. Let me just tell you what to do while I do it without raising money, do it independently. I haven't, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I've really been chilling. Yeah, yeah. And you've been chilling, but I feel as though you've been innovative. Yeah, I could chill and be innovative. See, I don't waste time. Those so, like, two, those two sound very different, man. Chilling seems like yo, I'm chilling, but being innovative and chilling—that's some innovative, new innovative thought. Only thing, and I, think about how innovative I am. I haven't said anything different in the last twenty years. It's just now everyone's hearing it. But I was saying that, and you heard me. Talking independence, that was the nature of Rockefeller. Talking family, talking self-awareness, talking they not better than us, all of that. Since health, health as well. So I haven't had health the whole nine. So I haven't even had to change. I'm just saying the same shit I've been saying from a Zoom. It ain't nothing why, different. Why do, you, why do you feel people are starting to wake up now? Or not even necessarily wake up, but be interested nah, in those things. Well, number one, they don't have no choice. The younger generation is the one that listened. The older generation was just so scared and so programmed that they thought they couldn't do anything without massa. And I was like, yo, you're bugging. So I stopped talking to, the, to, to my generation because they don't listen. I started to talk to the younger ones and I'm, I started to be, once there was the internet, I didn't need any more. <coughs> I didn't need to come outside anymore. I just started opening up art galleries and everybody came to the art galleries. But you do recall before, um, you know, there wasn't so much art in hip hop until I started opening up art galleries. That was on purpose. Mm. I'm like, yo, how do we don't know? Let me open up some art gallery. Let me give my culture some culture, or at least let my culture be aware of how much culture we have that they tried to erase from our brain. So I just brought it back. I was like, yeah, yeah. they made us forget who we are. They, they, they actually erased our history and made us believe they stronger than us. And I just, I just couldn't do it. I was like, yo, I'll just open up art galleries. I'll chill out. Why y'all go think, you know, make them, give, give them your, your ideas. We fight each other instead of them. None of that shit is logical to me. I just don't want to be around none of that shit. I feel you. But and when it, you do it, see me, I'm saying, yo, we're great. I love y'all. Let me show you how to get it. You know? So I'm not like trying to bad mouth. I'm just saying what I won't tolerate. Those are my boundaries. Right. You know what I mean? For but life. They, they, I have life boundaries. If you offend me culturally... If you don't have respect for your culture or mine, then I can't really be around. It. It's but like if you don't, takes, if you got a kid they, and you don't take care of your kids, which, and you could ask people in my family, if you got kids and you out, and I see you not with your kids, just like if I know that you might have cooperated, I'm not 
with you. It don't mean you can do it, do everything, and just leave me alone. Respect my boundaries, bro. Right, right. But it does take a different kind of like fearlessness to be that open and honest and then not worry about cancel culture, especially now that cancel culture is something that people, you know, they speak about heavily. Kevin Hart is going through it and battling it and all that. What makes you so indifferent to that? Because I'm in so many years. I, I just think because I've never been dependent on sponsors and someone hiring me. Mm. You know, that cancel thing is when someone can fire you. You know, that's why you have to be worried. Right. But what cancel? I haven't done anything that would offend culture, so why would I be worried about that? Well, as far as like when you say certain things that other people aren't saying, and you're like, why isn't everyone saying it? You just explain why, because they're worried that they can't get that next job. They can't oh, yeah, get or, or, or maintain. You their... can't knock master if you in his house. You saw what happened with your man, Nick. You can't knock master when you in his house. Then you got to say sorry in front of everybody. If a man, I don't care. Like if you in my house, then you're not going to ever try to disrespect me. Whether I'm right or wrong, you're not disrespecting me in my house. I'm going to kick you out my house. So, yeah, if you in another man's house, if you in Massa's house, you cannot offend Massa and think you're going to sit at his table. So nobody, everybody wants to sit at certain people's tables. I really don't. And they're not allowed to sit at mine. Mm. Got my own table. So who is allowed to sit at your table? What type of people? Like-minded, good, honest people. And usually not dudes. I don't like dudes that much because they have so many insecurities that they turn into women. But you do have a lot of women that helped you throughout your career. All women have helped me. Th- that's not, women have helped me through my career. Dudes have tried to hate and block. Women have been the only ones that have opened doors. Even down, so, to, even down to getting Jay's first record played on the radio. That was a woman that did that. Tracy did that for me. Wow. Uh, uh, Tracy over at uh, Hot 97? Yeah, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Bringing that up, do you, do you do you miss aspects of the music business? No. In, no. No. Even though that's like kind of, and, and and I'm jumping, but is that your first love? Even though it's the first thing you did, is that your first love or boxing or? First thing I did was sell drugs, and I don't miss that either. <laughs> I don't miss I don't miss hustling. I don't miss bottling up. I don't miss fighting. Going. I don't miss none. Of it was, for music, it was like, it was just too, it's, it's working too hard for other people that don't work for themselves. And that don't, and then right. become entitled. I just, it's not for me. Right. I love but music, though. Did, I never stopped making music. Right. And then also, what you call the music business is not what I call the music business. That wasn't real business to me. People would, that say they have titles that don't do jobs make, like, you can't call yourself a president if you don't know P&Ls and... It's not a president. You can't call yourself these titles if you don't do, do the real business. What I looked at was another culture <laughs> exploiting ours and giving black people titles just to not say what's going on wrong. Right. Just to be camp counselors for the f- And I couldn't deal with that. Like, how could you sell your people out like that for a check? That would be my problem with people. Like, how could you sell out your whole culture just for self-preservation? How could you live with yourself doing that? That was my problem. I be, I, and you know me, I have no filter. So I'd be asking people, like, what type of dude are you? And you see, I'd be like, what type of shit is this? When did niggas cut their nuts off for money? You know what I'm saying? I feel you. I feel you. And then be acting like, you know, how you act so happy, like when someone else gives you a pat on the head. I, I just, that's disgusting to me, man. There is like, the more they celebrate you, the more, like, the more another culture celebrates to do, the more our culture will celebrate. That don't make no sense. But, but speaking on, on, like, the whole, the cancel thing and, and getting accolades from outside and everything, we saw that Kanye had to go through a lot publicly. And you said no one checked on you when you were going through your things. But you did pull up on, on Ye to make sure that he was good. Um, even though... Your relationship might have seemed rocky in public. You made sure that you, that your man was straight. What was it? What is it about loyalty with you that made you want to go and make sure he, out of everyone, was was good? I go make sure everyone's good. 
The first call Freeway got when he lost his son was me. Oskino, me. Any, any one of my family, no matter what, if I don't see you or not, I'm just going to be there because it's the right thing to do. I take pride in being a man. I take pride in doing the right thing. I, I, I take pride in being there even when it's not convenient because that's what a real man does. That's not even a question. If any one of my brothers have any issues, even when Jay lost his nephew that time, I was still right there with him, even though I was I, I wasn't right with him, but I still made sure I was there. The the bond of loyalty for you is unbreakable, though. So that's that's basically what you're saying. My listen, I'm like Scarface. All I got is my word and my nuts, and I won't break for nobody. You know, you got to remember, like the bank account that you got to worry about is that love bank account. And what it looks like after this life. I'm not hustling for this life. I'm hustling for the eternal one. This is a very short existence. You have a long journey. Eternity. So where do you want to go? You want to go to heaven or hell? Now as a dad, do, do you... Do you father your, your sons differently than you do your daughters? Or is it... Yeah. Okay. Definitely. In ways. Pardon? In which ways? Um, I'm way more gentle with my daughters. You know, I teach my daughters. Like to my daughters, I'm a slave. I do anything for my daughters. And the reason why is because they need to get a man that's going to treat them at least like that or better. So that's why I'm like that. I'm not like that with my, my sons because I want my sons to understand when they're men, their job is to take care of their women, to make sure that they never have to fight, they never have to struggle, that they're complete, that they can be independent and walk away if they want. Like the other day, I gave Rocky a a a a a, a card. Um, what's the name of that card I gave him? Oh, the uh, my jet. Uh, jet, jet I, no, it's not jet. Um, but I just forgot. I, I, come on, man, find a thing. I, um. <laughs> Amalfi Jets. Amalfi, right? Amalfi won. Yeah. Yeah, Amalfi won jet card. You got $50,000 of, of uh, it's like a, 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 it's like a card where, a credit card or prepaid card for hours on jets. And, mm. you know, 50 racks. And I gave it to her. I said, look, if you ever want to leave me, you leave me in style. You go on a jet. You understand what I'm saying? Put that in your motherfucking wallet. I'll give you the jet to leave me. I want you to leave me in style. Don't stay because you got to, because you're worried about compromise and quality of living. I'm going to make sure you're right. Whoever was ever married to me walked away with a business. I never let you leave. You, I, I, I make it where you can be dependent, independent of me, just like every artist I work with. You only, I only want people around me because they want to be around me, not because they got to. Right, right. Could you speak to some of the um, some of the men that may have to deal with what you've dealt with with having multiple mothers, uh, baby mothers, or, or mothers of your children? Um, can you tell them how to maintain and and kind of stay sane without having, you know, the access to dollars that you may have? It doesn't cost as much as you think. The thing about men, especially black men, is we don't want to go to court. You know, anything not to go to court. No one wants to go to court. It's a last resort for a man. Women, they go to court. And, you know, sometimes a man really just has to do and make those calls and the research to understand their rights. You know, out here, um, I call Reggie. My child says, Daddy. And it's not, it doesn't cost a lot. You'd be really surprised, you know, what it is to be able to visit your child. You see, like, that's one of the major issues, it seems, that young black men, and, and just black men in general, with like, you know, child support issues, you know, visitation rights and all of that. And you mentioned at the top of the uh, interview how hard that's been on you. Um, but when you do spend the time with, with your kids, what is it like for you when you do get to spend the time? And, and what's it like when you finally get them all together? <laughs> well, most of my kids are adults now. But mm -hmm. Tallulah's 13 and, you know, She's, you know, I was able to provide a normalcy with her. Like what I learned with Boogie and I had custody of Boogie. And, you know, you have to make sure that when you have your child, that you don't always bring your child to your world 
you have to go to their world. So like bringing your child to the office is not considered spending time or having them hang out with you while you hang out with your friends. That's not it. So for Tula, what I learned, and this happened through therapy, is that when I hang out with her, at least when she was young, and now she's 13, it's a little different, is I have to go to Tulula time, Tulula's world. You know what I mean? I got to become, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten, And also there has to be consistency in their life. You know what I mean? Like they got to know that there's a certain day and a time that you're going to be there no matter what. They got to know that and they got to really, really, really know that, you know? Because yeah. Here comes my little golden bean right now. And real quick, Rock, real, real quick, yeah, real quick. Right. How have you seen a, a, a change in, in Dame with his newest son? Like, what has he brought into his life? Well, you know, Damon has always been, like, loves his children so much. Um, I just think that it's brought a lot of uh, patience and it's brought just a lot of happiness in his life. I mean, he seems really calm and he really just is enjoying being what he calls a 24 hour dad. So, you know, being able to wake up and see his baby right there and being able to play and grab him whenever he wants, I think is just something really- I don't know how anyone Damon... can have a baby, like something that they may, and rather be at a party yeah. or rather have a car or anything. Like this is the, this is jewelry right here. This is the most priceless. You can't even pay for this thing right here. Yeah, I and, just, and and if you have a, 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 you should get in the bed though, cause you don't feel well. Why are you not in the bed? I needed something to eat. But he was outside. I don't understand. Because he was complaining to me. Huh? Nothing. She's sorry. But she's like sick. I'm like, yo, why are you out there? It's, it's all love. Yeah. It's all love. I can hear her voice. You see, we all like coughed up. And shit. Yeah, yeah. Me and him, he, she's just getting it. We've had it for a week. We just getting over it. Oh man, look look at him, man. I know you just look at him in the in the dorm, man. Like all day, your your heart is overjoyed. It comes through in the pictures. What's up, homie? He's like he trying to wave. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, baby, clapping. Man, like you saying that waking up to him and that feeling. What do you want to do differently, or even more so, as, as a dad to him now that that you have this kind of special time that you didn't have with your others. Well, what's also great was we had a lot of time to prepare for him. And, you know, I'm a part of a group called the OSG, which is 90 black principles. And the principles that are at, from, you know, like Rocky's writing a syllabus based on her, our interaction and what we've learned from the principles from the womb to three years old. So he's, he's already potty trained, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, it, it, the things he does. You know, he's doing a lot, just pre just, prepa just preparing him, you know, just getting him right. You're definitely not going to do that. I saw you get ready to go get him. <laughs> she said, too. <laughs> she was like, I'll get him. I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> like, no, nah, I got <laughs> I'll take it. But, um, you know, just preparing him, doing the things like him being potty. He's been potty trained since he was four months old. You know, right before That's he got sick, Rocky had him doing swimming lessons, which was traumatizing but he could be he I saw could, that though yeah trauma but it's necessary we got a pool you know uh there's a principal principal jocko you know she we spend a lot of time even it's like we it's like having like a a, a focus group you know what i mean it, it's 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 incredible the things a baby can do if you teach it so i feel like if i can be a better parent then he's going to be a better parent. You understand what I'm saying? And I want, like, you know how you ask me, how do you, what do you do when you hang out with your kid? A lot of people don't know how to spend time with their children. And it's not that they don't want to. Like, honestly, the most difficult conversations that I have are with my children because they're the most important. They're the ones I care about the most. And I want to make sure that I affect them and influence them in the right way. And I'm not saying the wrong thing. So I'm really particular about that. I didn't know how to teach him, you know, the time I'm spending. I don't want to just be playing Uno. You know what I mean? I want it to be productive time. You hear me doing I want productive time. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you like he does everything. Right. He thinks he's he looking for the pop. Every time I cough, he cough, I get sick. We, so also, because we, it seems like we are very connected, you know, that's why you remember you heard, yes. I, like, I haven't smoked in a week. I, I gotta stop. I can't be doing it.
I've been high for like 10 years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like literally, you know what I'm saying? It's like, this, this is, I gotta get, it's time, you know? Uh, it's time, man. I, I, I gotta tell you, man, I, I appreciate your time. You just even dropping those gems. But I have to say, man, just seeing y'all on IG and as much as you share, you're very transparent. You've always been a hundred, no matter what, what, what you face. But seeing you be a dad in this time, you know, with this incredible young guy, it's it's beautiful to see, man. And, and Thank it's you, a bro. brave example, brave example to put that out into the world, man. Thank you, Dane. Thank you, bro. I appreciate that. If you want another amazing video with the one and only Dame Dash, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.